love it. I love it. I love it. Out of one to ten, I give it a hundred. Do my launch control. Good morning guys, welcome back to the Mikey T channel. Today, we got the Alpha 4C out because we're going to be installing the, my brand new V2 cold air intake from the one and only Euro Compulsion. So, let's get the car jacked up, let's take the right wheel off, and let's get started. Alright, let's just do a quick walk around. Let me show you the modifications that I have on my Alpha as of right now. So as you can see, we'll start with the wheels. Uh, stock wheels come with 18s in the front, 19s in the rear. I went with 17s. I went with 17 Evo Corsos in the front, 18 Evo Corsos in the rear, just so I can get a bigger sidewall tire and go a little bit wider as well. Then also I went with the carbon fiber scoops right over here. Let's air in, let's air out as well and also looks beautiful i personally like that then as well if we go over here to the interior of the car excuse the uh, the rug it's really dirty i have the carbon fiber with the formula one shift light steering wheel with the extended paddles which i absolutely love it's just eye candy with the formula one shift lights absolutely beautiful And I recently just ordered lowering springs for the Alpha because I got to get this car lowered. Uh, I've been hanging out with my buddy Vinny. He's got a white Alpha 4C and his car is lowered on the iBox springs. And the thing just looks nasty. It looks really, really good. And I can't get over it. I mean, I love the way the car looks, you know, even with the wheel gap, you know, kind of gives it that mean stance. But I saw his car and it's just lowered and it just looks absolutely mean. So I went ahead and I ordered the Evo. I'm sorry, I went ahead and I ordered the Eibach lowering springs from Euro Compulsion. So this wheel gap right over here, what do we got? Two fingers, three fingers. And these are 17 inch wheels with 215, 45, 17 tires by Federal. And I can fit three fingers right here. So we're gonna change that. So we're gonna be lowering it with the Eibach springs. It should make it, it should drop it about halfway. All right, guys. So I had to I had to roll over a brick just because my jack is too short to fit under the car. So I had to raise the car. So I rolled over the brick just to raise the height. Now the jack can actually fit under the car on the correct jack point for the back of the car. Because remember, this car has a carbon fiber tub, and if you jack it from the wrong point, you can possibly crack or damage the uh, frame, and you definitely don't want that. So here's a little technique that you can do. Now we're gonna jack up the car. The wheels, the lug nuts are already loose. Nice and slow. Okay. And make sure it looks all good. Very nice. And the wheel is officially off the ground. All right, let's let's get the rest of these lug nuts off. They're already cracked loose. 
Again, I don't have my gun, so I gotta do this all by hand. All right, and these are the black lug nuts, so you don't want to scratch them, so put them somewhere safe, soft, where they don't get scratched. All right, guys, it's time to get this wheel off. Ugh. Oh. All right, guys, now the next thing we have to do we have to take off the inside liner, all this, the left side and the right side, so that we can access the intake. All right, and just before you continue any further, make sure you disconnect the negative battery because we will be messing with some electric. Okay, up here we're gonna have three, one, two, and three 13 millimeter uh, screws that we have to take out and then we're gonna have another one here Here I'm sorry if the lighting's bad uh, Then we're gonna have one two three four So yeah, we got to take all those out and Then after that the liner will literally just fall right out So all the bolts are out on this side of the liner. Let's see if she just drops right out Yep, 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 beautiful. Wow, holy shit. Look at all, this is, this is incredible. Look at the skeleton, the skeleton frame of this car, aluminum, carbon fiber chassis. Oh man, look at that, that is amazing. I'm sorry the lighting isn't better, but wow. All right, let's keep going. Okay guys, next step is, okay, now that we got the liner out, the next step is the MAF sensor right up top over here. All right, we need to disconnect that first. There's a yellow tab, we're gonna disconnect that now. Okay. All right, you see this bolt right here? There's, there's three or four of them deep in here on the side of the air box. And it is a pain, excuse my language, but it is a pain in the ass to get them. Like I'm not a mechanic, so I don't have all, you know, all the fancy tools or the equipment. So I'm using what I have, but let me tell you, it took me at least a good 20 minutes just to get these three full bolts out. Now the airbox can freely move. Okay. Okay guys, so as soon as you get the fourth bolt that's up top over here, the bracket that's holding, that's supporting the air box is going to literally drop and fall. So be careful, make sure you catch it. This is the bracket. Make sure you don't hit the paint. This right here is the bracket. It even has its own like little bushing over here, which is pretty neat. Okay. Okay, very important guys. The MAF sensor over here there's gonna be a yellow tab you want to pull up on that yellow tab and then it's gonna be a black clip that you just push in and as you push in you pull up and it will disconnect from here okay next step uh, what I did was there's two clamps that's holding up this whole uh, I don't know what it's called air filter sensor it's where the sensor lives right in here okay and there's two clamps that are holding it break those two clamps off this is what I used I use this just twist it off the clamp and it disconnected and then this will literally fall right out and the rest of the air box will drop down um, and now we're able to fully remove the air box but with this be very careful because this is sensitive and uh, you don't want to mess that up. All right, so let's go ahead and let's try to remove this factory air box. Oh, it's a tight fit. Ah, oh, shit. Ah. 
Okay. She should she should just come right out. Be careful, don't scratch anything. Okay. Whew. And there it is, boys. The airbox is completely out. This is the stock Alpha Force airbox. This is what it looks like. And then enclosed in here is the filter. But let's take a quick look inside. Now you can actually see, hopefully it's not too dark. Now you can actually see the inside of the, of the 4C. You can see all the carbon fiber chassis. You can see up in here, look all carbon fiber. And then uh, let's keep going, let's continue. All right guys, now we're gonna put the whole map system into the filter itself. There's gonna be two sides to this. One side from this rib is gonna be longer. And this side over here is shorter. You wanna put the longer side into the intake itself. Okay. And you want it to go all the way up to the rib. Guys, the next step is we're gonna remove the last part of the intake into the throttle body over here and the turbo. So there's gonna be a clamp right down here. You wanna remove that and just pull up. And then any other like small accessories like zip ties, you wanna undo like this one right over here because it's holding some wires. So that's very important. So don't just tug it out. Make sure there's no wires attached to the actual intake because it's, on mine there was two. Okay, and here we go. That's all tight in here. Let me try a different angle. Come on, baby. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, that is removed. Place that down very gently. And now this should just, actually let's take the clamp off first. I don't want it falling down. Okay. Okay, now over here, we should just be able to just lift up but now we should just be able to lift up and the rest of the stock intake should be able to just come right out okay i'm literally standing in my trunk right now okay this is gonna be we still want to be careful with this because we you know just in case you ever need it again so okay and then this over here hopefully you can see that's what it looks like and then down there is also the wastegate and everything hopefully that's a good view we're gonna finally install the euro compulsion uh, silicone composite um, intake I don't know how to get this in it would help if I read the instructions, probably this way. I mean, who needs instructions anyway, right? This goes like this. Okay. Oh my God. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm not a big guy. I'm only 160 pounds, 5'8", and I can barely maneuver in here. Uh, okay. All right, now. In here, you're gonna see, sorry guys if it's very shaky, but I'm trying the best I can to get you good video. All right. So, wanna make sure that the clamp itself is is uh, accessible so that you can tighten it. That's very important. Then we're gonna 
All right, so now we're gonna push down on a throttle body. Okay. Maybe, maybe I have it too tight right now. Okay, let's loosen this up a little bit. Oh yeah, she's sliding in now. Okay. All right, and then just, just to make sure, feel all the way around, make sure that everything is snug because you really can't see the other side. Now we're gonna tighten up the clamp and then we will uh, jack the car back up and uh, put the filter on and connect everything else. All right guys, before you install, okay, okay guys, I made a mistake. Before you install the actual silicone hose, make sure you attach the filter itself because it is a very tight, tight fit. And doing this from inside the wheel well is extremely difficult. So attach it now and then slide it inside over there I, because this is again a very tight fit everything is fully installed connected to the throttle body inside all tightened up over there as well but i just want to show you guys one thing i added a zip tie just because it was it's a little loose it's a little flappy and so what i did was i just i just secured it to the frame over here just so that it doesn't bounce around um because there is no other connection to hold it it's just bolted to well not bolted but it slides onto the throttle body you tighten it down but you know this is a long arm this is a long piece over here so it does flex a lot so i just used I just use a, a tie wrap just to secure it. That's all, just so it doesn't move. You're not gonna see it. All right, but uh, that's all in. Now let's go ahead and button up the entire liner over here and uh, put the wheel back on. What's up guys? All right, so the car is fully put back together. Just installed the new intake from Euro Compulsion. Uh, it took me a few hours just because everything was just in a really tight space and it was, the hottest day out of the summer. It was 95 degrees, I'm extremely burnt, I'm sweaty, I'm tired, I got a headache. But let's give you guys a cold start of the central line exhaust, and then I'm gonna bring you inside the cabin and hopefully we get some good intake noises. in manual. Actually, you know what? Screw that. Race mode. Race mode is the only way. 
turn everything off. Race mode connected. sounds like I'm sorry if I'm screaming <laughs>
my everyone in the neighborhood is gonna hate me. They're gonna come looking for me, knocking on my door, and tell me to slow the fuck down. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's so good. Things I can't go on the highways because they cut up all the streets over there, and it's just horrible. So I gotta do it in the neighborhood. <laughs> Someone's gonna call the cops on me. All right. All right, guys. More to come to the channel on the Alpha 4C. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments below. I will do my best to answer all of them. I will see you guys on the next one. Peace out.